Hello everyone and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. Here we are with Mac and Kerman and Mick and Kerman around Ike and in this episode the first thing we need to do is get all of our guys back into the command module so that they'll be ready for the trip home. And the trip home they'll have to wait for it because the trip home will require Kerbin to be 75 degrees behind Duna. So we're looking at, you know, approximately three quarters of a Kerbin's year before that's going to be ready to happen. Maybe even a full year because Duna will have moved a little bit as well. In the meantime, we'll have to keep an eye out on our Jewel missions and probably they'll reach Jewel before we can transfer these guys back from Duna to Kerbin. So it's a bit complicated. I haven't checked out the timing yet. But first things first, let me get this mission into daylight so that we can transfer crew and science a little bit more safely. Not that light is particularly great around Duna in the first place. Not bad though. Let me turn it on its axis. Hopefully the crew hatches aren't too far apart. Yeah, that's good. So, uh... Hmm. Yeah, is I trust our crew member is still in there, yeah? Yeah, Mac and Kerbin still in there. What I want to do is check, however, the science. I think he got the stuff from outside here. Oh, tough to see. We don't have any goo containers. Do goo containers are the important ones. Okay, uh, so... Mackin. Okay, uh... Take data. Right. All items collected. I've forgotten that before. On, uh, previous... In the previous series. In my previous stock series, I accidentally left data around Duna. So that was no good. Now we've got this little flap here blocking the way. I don't know, I, I assume that would be collidable, so we have to get around that. Okay. Uh, okay. No, no, that way. That way, back, back, up. Forward. Okay, grab, and board. Okay, excellent. Alright, that's very good. Let's see. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, the tanks here have been topped off for close... Oh, I guess not. Wow. Oh, I guess there wasn't enough mob in this to fill them. Okay, so all the essentials are moved. I believe... Which means we can now dump the lander. I hope I've got this right. Okay, how do I declamp? Ah, there we go. So we've got our crew members. That piece is floating away. Shield. Let's take a look inside to make sure everybody's cozy. Well, uh, looks like, uh... Oh, he's down here, okay. Alright. That's all good. Now, getting... <clears throat> getting back to Duna, instead of hovering around Ike here, Obviously, it's a very similar burn to what we do with the moon, or Minmus. Ooh, uh, the way things are rotating is important. That's, that's a thing. So, before we do anything...
that's the mission we're targeting, really. Going around that way. I think if we leave, we're, we'll be going around this way. Hmm. Well, right now it only says 3.5, so maybe we are going in the right way. If we were going in the opposite direction, it should say 180, right? Hopefully. <laughs> Uh, okay. I'm gonna go with that logic. Okay, we're headed out. This thing is telling me that my my node relative to the mission the lander there is good so let's pretend that that inclination is right oh we're getting close to the ascending node right now okay uh, so let's plot the plane change from out here since it's more affordable out here. Oh, that's actually the wrong circuit. That's actually the next go around. Well, it should still be the same direction. Uh, but we're not going to reach escape before we get here. Uh, would this still work? Possibly. Let's see. Oh. Well. Could be worse. Looks like we are indeed going in the same direction as our target. I think we should get closer and uh, before we try and plot a intercept. We've got time on our hands after all. They're going to be hanging around the Duna system for quite a while. Okay, let's get our orbit down so this is more manageable. wonder why the Kerbals look so scared right now. You'd think I had gotten them into a crash trajectory or something. Okay, so. Target's over there. Let's go around. Let it catch up. Okay, so now we need, we need to fix things up a bit. Add a maneuver. Bring this down. And we need to engineer our encounter if it will bother to show us what's actually going on. Uh,
Okay, 0.3 kilometers. There we go. That looks good. And we need to get there right now. Let's see, where are we? There we are. Ooh, don't go over. Actually, you know what? I should be doing this with RCS, but it's too slow. We'll do this last part with RCS. Point 0.1 kilometers. I better not try to get any closer than that. Okay, so we have our encounter. And we are on the dark side, so once again, losing electric charge here. There's hardly any relative velocity between us and the target. Because the orbits are so, so closely match, matched. So... Just using RCS to correct this. Well, okay, I do need to burn. Okay, there we are. Now, the other mission doesn't even have reaction wheel power, I think. Let's see. You guys. Can you figure out where the command module is? Uh, let's target it on the map. Oh, I think we see it there. Okay. Uh, oh, pointing in this direction. That's great. Still got mod propellant. Wait. Okay. Will this work? Okay, okay, so we can uh, turn with mod propellant. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. That'll make things simpler. Okay, we've set the Clampatron as the target. Let's make sure we've got our shield open and that we're uh, controlling from here. Check back, make sure it's pointing in the right direction and everything. Obviously it isn't. It's drifted away because it doesn't have any stability control without the RCS on. And on that note, I think I will leave the RCS on. Uh, yeah. No, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Okay, we are docked. Fairly straightforward docking. And once again, before I transfer our crew member from the lander back to the command module, I think it's a good idea to wait for daylight. So let's do that. Okay. Now, didn't really dock very well this time. Looks like the crew hatch is on diametrically the opposite side as this one. 
Oh well. Hello. Crew hatch indicator. Please let me get my Kerbal out. Please let me get my Kerbal out. Okay, Ed Ball. Uh, take the data. Wow, look at all that. Uh, I think that we, we don't have the thermometer readings, do we? There were thermometers, weren't there? No, don't store experiments. Uh, hmm. Well, Ed Ball's our EVA specialist, isn't he? Maybe, maybe he's very good at this. It's tough to say. Oh, the thermometers are up here, though. And speaking of EVA specialist, uh, do no, we don't get any points for an EVA report here. Just checking. All right. Um, get your jet back on. Let's take this slowly. Keep pressing down instead of up. Hmm. Wondering if there's anything with this barometer reading. Ah yes, take data. Okay, well we got that barometer. I don't really, can't really see if there's any additional instruments out over here. I don't think so. Okay. Who hatches up there? Hmm. No, nope, no, nope, up. Keep pushing down to so up, darn it. Okay, uh, I seem to have misplaced the crew hatch. Where is it? Four. I swear it's like right here. Or is it? Oh, it's over, all the way over here, is it? Oh, okay. <sighs> darn, darn, darn. It's tough when I can't see anything. Okay. Phew. All right. So crew is in, and what I need to do is transfer fuel in. Okay. So the mop propellant seems to be all full including the one in the command module itself. 
There's no more fuel here. There's no science. Alright, I think it's uh, safe to ditch this lander. Okie dokie. Got 11 stored data here. We better get this stuff back. Although the guys are all happy now. Okay. Well, they've got a long wait in orbit around Duna. Gotta get Kerbin all the way around to there. Thereabouts. Okay, and to do that, since it would be futile to time warp with uh, this mission right now anyway because it's too close to Duna and my time warping will be limited. It's best to jump out to our, the first mission that will reach Jewel. So let's go to there. So here's Jeb and apparently the other two are, yeah, they're, they're hiding in there though we can't really see them. I don't know why but apparently their pictures don't show up when they're in there. Okay, so we are going to bring this mission in, I think. 61 days, yeah, uh, definitely we will get uh, into Jewel before, before the Duna mission is ready to go home. Okay, here we are, and of course I time warped right through it. Uh, not, not at full speed, but enough so that my encounter with Jewel has changed a little bit which is alright because we're like going in totally the wrong way anyway so I would have to have corrected it. Um, we need to be going in the same direction as the moons of Jewel rotate and right now we're going sort of opposite end not to mention crashing into the planet so no not that way actually the other way would be best and crashing into Jewel Sort of a good sign, in a way. Okay, uh, let me just very quickly... Oh, it's a whole day between now and that maneuver. Amazing, isn't it? Lots of sphere of influence with Jewel. Focus view on Jewel. I just want to make sure I'm right about the direction of the moons. Yep, this will be good. Lathe is also a error breaking possibility. But without deadly reentry we don't need to be too concerned about that. It might be a little bit more efficient to error break around lathe. But let's see now. I don't think efficiency is a huge issue. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think so. As long as we don't burn up in Jules' atmosphere, I think we're pretty good. Do a docking port? No, we've got a parachute. In retrospect, that's probably a bad idea. Should have definitely put a docking port on this, just in case a res rescue mission is necessary. But this is the return vehicle, so basically all of this fuel can be burned off. This will, this lab will remain in orbit around Jewel, and that tank brings us home. All right. Let's make sure our entire interplanetary situation is still okay. Yeah, I think we'll be good for next, how long is it? Six days? Playing completely stock here, so obviously no Kerbal Alarm Clock would be very helpful in this situation, needless to say.
still 1.8 billion meters away from Joule. Yeah, quite acceptable. Okay, at this point I'm going to check out Error Breaking Calculator to figure out exactly how deep into Joule's atmosphere I should be going. In my past experience, I normally go, depending on how fast I'm approaching, if I'm going really, fa really fast, we're talking about 116 kilometers and then uh, approximately around 120 for something like this. So that's my guess. And let's see what error breaking calculator has to say about that since I'm not sure. Wow. Uh, error breaking calculator is telling me 108 to 111. 108 if I want my apoapsis to be at Leif's uh, altitude and 111 if I want it at Val's altitude. That is dicey. That's a lot closer than I normally try to encounter Joule. Let's get a little bit closer and then I'll do the calculation again. Maybe it'll be more interesting if I, I'm not so far out. We're currently sort of more than a million kilometers out, so okay, let's let's take this in a bit. Okay, so let me redo the calculation, and if it is that low, then I'm going to have to do the burn to adjust and get it there. Nope, uh, still the same. Uh, 111 for Val's altitude. I think I'm going to go for that, just for safety's sake. So... Uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, definitely an RCS style burn. We do have RCS on this, don't, don't we? I know some missions I forget it, but yeah, we've got it. And don't worry, uh, we will be doing science in a bit. Let me just get this all shaken out. Maneuver is even drifting away from me here. Okay, well, uh, the math said 111. So I'm gonna go with that. Alright. Now, science. Should observe mystery goo. Goo feels right at home here. Process in lab module 15% transmit mod. Uh, should we keep it or should we transmit it? That's the question. Well, maybe we can transmit it, reset the experiment, and then keep the rest. I haven't ever tried that before. Like I said, I don't usually use the research module. So let's uh, process in lab module. Right. And transmit that data. Okay, and can we reset this experiment now? Uh, clean experiments, okay. Okay, and then I can observe Mystery Goo again. And I'm going to keep that data. And I'm going to have Bill go out and retrieve that and he will also do an EVA report and that can be transmitted but let's let's keep that for now uh, I don't think he can really crawl his way over there so
Okay, and while he's out here, I guess he can... Uh, oh, no, not the other way. I thought there was an option to clean it. Yeah. Or do we now... I guess we have to get the science lab to do that now. Okay. So, yeah, uh, let's clean the experiments. Very good. Review data. That's the mystery Google observation we're keeping. We're going to transmit the EVA report, though. We've got the electric charge. Okay. So, yeah, we keep this data. How about getting Jeb to do the crew report? You watch the flowing green storms below. They seem to go on forever, endlessly swirling into each other. Okay, transmit that. And I don't think any of our other instruments are going to be useful anyway. And I sort of ah, oh, there's the thermometer. Nope. Okay, so uh, that's Jewel over there. Jeb's got good eyes if you can see any details. Maybe he's got a little telescope of him or something. Okay, so we're at the... Well, okay, now we're not at the right altitude. That's funny. Okay, now approximately the right altitude. Okay, let's orient retrograde. Thank our lucky stars that we don't have Delhi reentry or Fermero space, because that would probably rip us apart. And I'm going to end this episode with us hopefully getting into orbit around Jewel. Okay, Jewel, Lathe. Can't see any of the other moons right now. I'm going to retract the solar panels. Oh, this this bow, I think. Val remains the only moon of Jewel that I've actually landed on. So we really should try and correct that in this series. I don't know how much time I have left before 0.24. Wow, the Jewel texture could do with some upgrade. Looking at it right now, I still have no idea how Jeb saw swirling storms in it. Honestly, uh, it would have been somewhat of a smarter thing to keep the guys currently in the science lab in the command module just in case we needed to escape, but... Then again, the... Delta V on the command module is not very much compared to what's still left in the rest of the vehicle. Uh, do we have a barometer? 
can't be done right now. Okay, but uh, oh, you're you're not gonna be cooperative now. Uh, something about the barometers. Once you fail to use them properly, they decide that they don't ever want to be used again. And same for the thermometer there. Can this clean those experiments? No. Should be a new mystery goo. Uh, let's process that in the lab module. And I'm gonna just transmit that. Uh, right. Good. Now, measuring surface speed. Actually, let's just keep that to over. I, I am not concerned with the surface at all. I am firmly confident that we will remain in orbit and we will not have to pretend like we can land on Jewel. One thing, now that we, we're, we get, we're getting a lot of new stuff in point two four, obviously 64-bit, the whole contract situation. One thing I believe has been neglected and really needs a lot more work are the interiors of these things. Uh, yeah, I think, I think the interiors, I, I, I don't even know if the, I guess the, Science Lab doesn't even have an interior, and that's why we we don't even see them, but but yeah, interiors should be a thing. I mean, just from a video point of view, uh, Showing them on the inside is does have a little bit of fun to it. Okay, well our orbital speed is still going up as we we're below 160 kilometers now. Periapsis 111.492. Once we hit drag, that will actually go down. I would have thought that Jules' atmosphere... Oh, now it's, now it's got us. Okay. We've got drag. Not really decelerating that much. I think somebody said that my Kerbals would experience high g-forces. They are not. Uh, in fact, uh, this is what. Uh, this is this is not too bad actually. Barely one g. You can see one g is nine meters per second per second, and every second we're not really dropping that much. We're, uh, you can see it's just uh, two G's almost. So for some reason somebody thought that air breaking around Joule caused high G forces. No, not really. Not in the slightest. And I'm waiting for it to wrap around. And yes, we now have an orbit around Joule. Now, air braking calculator had promised me something with an apoapsis around the orbit of Val. And 
it doesn't look like it's too far off. Ooh, 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 oh, oh. Well, we could probably, if we really wanted to boost up to get that again, I guess it's possible. Okay, uh, we should be getting out of this pretty quickly. So I'm just going to establish a stable orbit around Jewel first. And then I'll have to see what kind of... We seem to be in a slightly off inclination here. Not too bad, but enough that it'll have to be corrected for for some of the encounters. If we were to set Lathe as a target, about 2.9, and let's say I wanted to... Seems like encountering Val is much easier than anything else right now. Would it be possible to encounter... well, this looks like it's going to... oh, there's a Lathe encounter here. Wait. This trajectory gets us a Val encounter and a Lathe encounter? That seems to be what it's indicating here. I think we have to go for that, right? I think this is a thing we have to do. Four minutes. Okay. But before I forget, we do need to do some more science now that we're close to Jewel. We need to get the EVA report and the crew report done. As the vehicle settles down, I'll have Jeb, as usual, do the honors with the crew report. Uh, as the vehicle settles down, I said. Okay, that's transmitted. Didn't really read that, but... Let's have Bob do the EVA. Bob, I know it's wiggling a lot, just try your best. Okay, keep that board. And let's uh, review the data. Uh, EVA report, transmit that. Keep this one. Okay. All right, so that's the data close to Joule done. Didn't really get the thermometer reading, but we couldn't because it wasn't cooperating, or the barometer for that matter. And I'm gonna try for this double encounter, this trajectory which gets me both the Val and the Lathe. I hope this is right. I, I don't know whether it would mess with me like this, Yes, yes it would, uh, actually, but I don't know if it is doing so or not. Uh, looks like it's close enough. Let's boost this orbit. Might also get me out of the atmosphere. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe yes, maybe no. Got to also watch electric charge. I'll extend the solar panels immediately after this. Whoa, okay, so that's what's going on, huh? Wow. It's not bad. And that's the lathe one, but we haven't hit Val yet. Wait. Let me get rid of this. Okay, so that that was actually oh wow. So we're we're there. We've got it. Okay, and that's bringing us further away from Val. Um. 
Hmm. Interesting. And can we get closer to Val at all? Yeah. Although not that much. But I don't think it's worth it. Okay, well I'm gonna leave it here. Let me get the solar panels out. And on this fine note with our our top three, Jeb, Bill and Bob in orbit around Jewel, though soon to be encountering many other things. I think this is a good time to the end the episode and we'll find out what happens with these encounters in the next episode. We're still pretty far away from anything else happening. These guys are still a fair ways away from Jewel. We'll probably be able to take care of all the man stuff uh, around Jewel before these guys come in or before uh, Kerbin is in the right position for the Duna transfer back home. So that's that's the order of business and so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll join me for the next part of this dual mission. And if you did enjoy this video please do press like and I'll see you next time.